with this video, I'm going to talk about the process more than I usually do. It began as a mood, which led to a concept sketch, and then a practice piece, and lastly, a complete painting. I knew I wanted to use Boku Undo's Shadow Blacks and Core's Earth Colors. The practice piece was to make sure those were the colors I wanted and that they would look good together. I also selected my Neptune brushes, all rounds in sizes 12, 4, 2, and 0. That's a sheet of Arches cold press watercolor paper. It's nine by, um, it's six by nine, uh, cut down from a nine by 12 sheet. Here, I just made a bunch of pools of the shadow blacks. Red, green, blue, and yellow, I believe was what I went with. I did the background wet on dry, going for a messy, mottled look with the colors seeping into each other. That's the number 12 round brush there. I was playing around with a new webcam, so that's where this angle is from. And yeah, it looks really dark here, but I knew there was going to be drying shift, and... I just kind of hoped it would be enough where it wouldn't fight too much with the foreground I had in mind. I kind of got distracted, and instead of moving the dryer around, I completely dried the middle first. I sort of panicked, thinking it was going to retain a hard edge, but I just dried around the edges as well, and it was fine. But yeah, there was definitely a big drying shift there. Of course, I'd forgotten that I wanted to add spatter effects. Uh, it's more interesting, I think, when you spatter on a wet surface. For some reason, I blotted the spots with a tissue, so I was kicking myself about that because it all ended up looking too subtle. Yeah, not bad. Looks pretty good. It's pretty close to what I originally had planned. So uh, I did some light penciling to uh, place the branch where I wanted it. And uh, then I used a, a Faber-Castell pen, the one with a brush tip. To line it. I did have the original uh, sketch there to help me along. Of course, I wasn't aiming for exactness. I actually did consider tracing the sketch onto the watercolor paper and doing it that way, but I wanted the process to be less structured, more off the cuff, at least for this part. I kind of wish I'd done the leaves bigger. I think that would have been more appealing visually. But at the same time, that would have taken away from the mood. I wanted the leaves to be dried out, not big and healthy and colorful, but more, I don't know, sad, dying. So although in the end there wasn't a lot of color and it wasn't particularly pretty, it reflected my feelings at the time, which was the purpose. Yeah, I was kind of down. That doesn't happen often, and I hadn't really painted through moods like that. I don't think of my work as particularly emotional. 
So it was interesting to work through the moment and have the art be almost entirely a feeling. That's the number four round brush for the painting of the leaves. Yeah, I'm really liking this uh, set of core earth colors. They're just so pretty. I even just like looking at them in that little flower-shaped porcelain mixing palette. Want to guess the color on my nails? It's gold bright by Clean Color Nail Lacquer. And yeah, I've worn it uh, once, maybe twice before in uh, the videos. So it prob probably looks familiar. After painting the leaves and the branch, it didn't quite look right. Uh, it needed something. So I thought maybe a white edge lining everything would be cool. I'd even put some uh, bleed proof white in the little bottle cap and was ready to dip in when I thought, no, that's not going to work because that's not the mood. And so I grabbed the Kuratake Starry Color set and chose the yellow gold. It worked so well on the Coven Coffee piece. I really liked the look on that one. So I went with it again here. Even though there are like six colors in that set, I believe the lighter ones don't show as well. They aren't as opaque as this one and a couple of the others. That's why I chose yellow gold, because I knew it would show up well. During the editing, I skipped ahead or during this portion. I didn't feel that it needed to be shown in its entirety. We get the idea. It's a gold outline. I'm kind of pleased with the look of the leaves, I guess. To me, they look like, yeah, they could be brittle. They would crinkle and snap if you were to crush them in your hand. So I think it works in that way as far as conveying a feeling. But again, looking at it, it's not pretty. Like I said, larger leaves would have allowed for more color, which would have been nice visually, but that wasn't what this was about. I use dollar store masking tape and it's 
worked fine for me. When I first started, I used a different brand of tape and I stuck it to my jeans first to lessen the tackiness before applying it to my paper. Uh, another trick is to heat the tape with a hair dryer just before removing it from your paper. I slowed down to show the unmasking at regular speed. Unmasking. <laughs> Untaping at regular speed. Just because sometimes I hear people uh, new to watercolors asking, you know, hey, are, are there any tips for how to take the tape off? I'm having trouble sometimes with tearing. It's not working the way it should. And it's uh, basically doing it slowly and making sure that you don't pull up, but rather to the side, parallel to your surface. Also, pull away from the paper. See here, I'm pulling away and again, not pulling up, but to the side and away and parallel to your surface. That makes it less likely to tear or damage your paper. And uh, you get a feel for it after a while. You get confident that you aren't going to tear your paper as long as you're not careless about it and just rip it off like a Band-Aid. That's the wrong tactic. But yeah, nice effect with the gold. I think it works. It's not so bright that it negates the darkness. So, yeah, I was in a mood. And that's why I'm going to call this dreary. Yes, that's it. Dreary. I may have overdone the seasonal immersion thing. In hindsight, maybe playing a Forever Autumn remix on a loop for hours wasn't the best idea. In any case, I'm happy to share this arting experience. Until next time, stay artsy, my friends.